She is an icon as the star of Baywatch to 14 covers of Playboy magazine. Uh, but as I learned when I sat down with Pamela Anderson recently, it is her strength that's more than skin deep. It's helped her navigate overnight fame, leave an abusive marriage to a very famous man, and bring her all the way to the Kremlin? We began with her work with an anti-sexual violence organization called PAVE and its Ride Responsibly initiative, which warns about app-based ride-hailing services. Watch this exchange. These drivers aren't regulated, so it's unsafe. I was always told, don't take a ride with a stranger. And there's this false sense of security with these apps that these people are vetted, and they're not. So. I think it's just something we need to consider and think about as parents. I remember my father used to say, I don't care what time of night it is or if you've been drinking, I will come get you. Mm -hmm. They don't get in a cab. Don't get, you know, don't go anywhere alone. It's really timely, you know, given everything that's going on in our country right now. I'm sure you were cognizant of that. Yes, this is the perfect time to be talking about it. We should be brave enough to be able to speak up in the moment instead of having to wait these long periods of time, hashtags and things like that, to be able to talk about things that have happened. I mean, I feel like women are finding their courage, but it's slow coming, you know, because right. they feel like the system is stacked against them. Yeah, but less and less. I mean, there has been a lot of progress made, but we also have to um, be brave enough to, to speak out in the moment and take action. Pammy! Pammy! Pam. Pamela suffered her own domestic abuse while married to her first husband, drummer Tommy Lee. See, your marriage to Tommy ended in divorce, and I know mm -hmm. you've been public about the fact that there was some abusive behavior. Mm -hmm. Where did you get the strength to to walk out and say no. It's the hardest thing in the world because you're in love with that person, but you can't be in a place that's dangerous and you can't have your kids see this kind of behavior and it's the hardest thing in the world to do. You just have to do it. So there's the cycle of abuse too when you go back into the same relationship. You know, you allow that person, you've, you've said it's okay for them to act that way, so now it's just gonna get worse and get worse and get worse. Of course, I went back and forth with, in my relationships and I haven't figured it out yet, that's for sure. Anderson recently started a friendship with WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange and visits him regularly at the Ecuadorian Embassy in London, where he's been living in asylum since 2012. Let's talk about Julian. <laughs> How on earth did that happen? <laughs> I met Julian through Vivian Westwood. The fashion um, designer. Yes, the fashion designer. At the Ecuadorian Embassy? Yes, at the Ecuadorian Embassy. And I just wanted him to tell me how to be more effective as an activist. How could I improve my um, foundation. What does he think? Could we brainstorm about something? Is it a nice place? Is he living well? I mean, what's the... No. Set the scene for me. He lives in a very tiny space, smaller than here. He never sees the sunlight. He doesn't know out... He can't get outdoors. He doesn't go near the windows, really, unless he goes out in that little balcony once every few years. He's so funny, and he's, he's very kind, and he's very smart. He's brilliant. And we talk about everything. I'm there for four hours at a time, and I see him all the time. He must be so... Happy to see you. He is happy to see me when I come. He's very sad when I leave. Is it, is it romantic? I, I wouldn't say it's romantic. I wouldn't say it's romantic. But it's, we're well, very there's close. There's hedging there. There's hedging. <laughs> well, it's, we're very close. We're very close. He's really um, an important person to me. He, he's a controversial figure, as you know. Yes. In 2010, Assange was accused of sexual assault against two women in Sweden, which he denied. He was accused of rape. How does that factor into your... I don't think so. I think that that's... Um, if you read through all the reports and the UN findings, there's no evidence of rape. In May, Swedish prosecutors dropped their investigation into Assange. No charges were filed. Do you think he's going to get out of there soon? Where's he going to go? I think he's safe where he is. And if he were to leave the embassy, he'd be arrested. While she did not admit to speaking with Assange about Russia and our president, she did share that she travels to Russia often. You know, I speak at the Kremlin a lot about environmental issues. and I, You do? Yes, every I did December. Not know that. Yes, I've been there four times now. And um, when we speak about it, the first thing they do is they come in and they go, so what has Russia done now? What's America mattered for us now? It's like a joke. It's, like, it's a comedy. They think it's such a joke. And these are the most powerful people in Russia around a table. And they say, so Pamela, tell us what, what's going on. Is it, what's our fault today? Anderson recently moved to France and marked a major milestone this past July. How is Pamela Anderson at 50? It's hard for me to think of myself at, at this age, but I'm doing everything I want to do. I'm living in the south of France. I am 99% of my life is devoted to my causes. My kids are grown, they're beautiful, they're talented, and they're, they're healthy and happy and ambitious and calculated. All those things I don't understand, but, so, but they do, so they're going to be okay. And so things are good.
Good. Things are, things are really good. <laughs> So we reached out to Uber and Lyft, the largest ride hailing apps. Uber said all drivers must undergo a screening process, which includes a driving and criminal history background check. Lyft also said every driver must undergo a background check and meet additional requirements. The question is whether those are as tough as ones you'd get through a prepaid service that you'd you know, make a reservation with. They say they have a zero tolerance drug and alcohol policy along with a 24 seven support line. And an interesting follow-up phone conversation. One of Pamela's publicists told one of our producers that Pamela says she would consider marrying Julian Assange if it would get him out of his current situation in the embassy. <laughs> She's also dating a soccer player over there in, in uh, France. And I said, what, you know, are you going to marry Julian? What's, what's the story? She said, well, my aunt says, you know, no, no one man can satisfy you, that, that no one man has it all. And I'm starting to think she's right. <laughs> Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.